starting recording. And welcome, welcome, welcome to a huge crowd this morning. Thank you very much for being here to honor our own Christy Steves. Yay. Hey. And, and, and so you're going to hear a lot about her journey this morning. Um, and so we first of all want to uh, note her new credentials, not only a master photographer, master artist, and of course, craftsman and CPP, but now an ASP fellow. Thank you very much for being part of us and lending your, your expertise. May I welcome new members right off. Would you be so kind as to unmute yourselves and tell us who you are? Who is I? I'm Rhonda. here and Lisa. Yeah, I'm Lisa Pertilli, and I'm newly degreed and um, very anxious to be a part of the ASP family. Tell us your expertise, Lisa. Well, I think mostly I'd say I'm very into photographing pets, but more so than that, I really love to paint. I love to digitally paint animals and create that kind of art. So um, sort of taking off of, I was a veterinarian till I retired a couple of years ago. And now I've sort of found my creative life in uh, creating animal art. Fabulous. Who else is new? Me. I'm Kathy. Oh, I'm new. Oops. That's right, Kathy, go for it. <laughs> I'm a new master of photography. Um, my last print merit that I needed was this guy, Sully. <laughs> Um, and really happy to be here. <laughs> Super. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, who else? Rhonda. I don't know. I am. I'm new. Rhonda Strickland. And um, I specialize in real estate and pet photography. And nice. digital. I do digital painting as well. Fabulous. A uh, girl of all sorts of trades. Yes, and here's my goat. Somebody wants to see it. There she is. <laughs> Cute. This is Noelle Nutmeg. <laughs> and she's spoiled. It even says so on her jacket. So. And obviously a, a fashionista goat. She is a fashionista. This is her new one. It says spoiled. <laughs> yes. As though we didn't know. That was an obvious. Um, have I missed anyone? Anybody else new? Yes. I'm here. Linda yep. Pash. Hi, oh. Linda. Hi, Linda. Hi. Hi. I wish I had a nice background. I'm going to try to hide this. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm a, a nature photographer, mainly flowers. And um, I'm, I'm really excited to be a part of ASP now, open to a lot more educational opportunities and meeting a lot more people. So thank you. Wowzer. Well, that's why I'm here. It's for the people. <laughs> All right. Kip, are you new? Yes, yes, I'm new, uh, newly degreed this past January. Uh, actually, I spoke to ASP last March, a year ago. Uh, yep. I'm a retired college professor and professional scenic designer in the theater. And that's what my presentation was on last year. And uh, basically, I do portraits mostly, um, fine art, and I, I do a lot of uh, theater production and dance photographs throughout the Midwest. Wow. Okay. Well, dance is a big deal and as extremely hard to do. Kudos to you. All right. We, gosh, we've got 35 people. Christy, they love you. Um, I, at this point, I am going to have in just a few moments. There are some announcements. Uh, the Images of Distinction, remember, it does close on the 5th of February. That's just a couple of days. So be sure to take advantage, if you can, of this opportunity for uh, awards, trophies, points, da -da -da -da. okay, you know what that is about. And, of course, the photographic medallion on, of ASP. The competition Petition is on the 17th of February with a discussion following on the 18th. Okay, so on the 9th of February, our Zoom is going to be meeting the ASP board, a chance to put them all in the hot seat and ask them questions. Uh, on 16th, um, this is Webster Wright. That, that is at 12 p.m. Central Time, using the military style to photograph a wedding. 
who knew? Uh, that'll be one I'm sure to get in on. On the 23rd at 6 p.m., so the evening time central, Tom McCabe, uh, a very personal project, Faces of Vietnam, a uh, legacy of veterans. Don't forget the all-day program with Judy Renford, A Metamorphosis. That's 9 to 5 p.m. Central. Uh, and you can, of course, find all of this information if I went too quickly on ASP, asofp.com. And in the meantime, if you haven't renewed your membership, get to it. Uh, I do want to shout out one company that I met at convention that we all might take advantage of it and that is copyright alliance something if you do books or you quote um, either imagery or text uh, that is free to sign up and I have been on their website and there's a huge amount of really great information there that uh, would be interesting to us all okay so now no, it's Christy's time, and I am thrilled to be the one who is introducing her, because until I went to her website, I didn't realize what we had in common, namely being old Ohioans, and down, you're not going to believe this, not down to the way we have bracelets in common. Mine <laughs> happens to be my engagement uh, ring and my honor of Christo, the late artist. But see, she does this. And if you look at her, does she not be a Tinker Bell? Of course, with a much nicer personality than the original, who was kind of a little bitch, actually. But <laughs> so telling you all about Christy. Uh, she started off in uh, university wise with a double major. Um, journalism, uh, political science, again, so similar to me. And that's why she got into photography in the first place. She became a news reporter and then she did the video. And, and, and it was so big deal that she had to be behind the camera of stills. And she was thinking and thinking about how to change the just to move sideways. And that's how we got her into the steel photography. And of course, everything she does now is all about character and personality and bringing out the most unusual stories in her portraiture. Um, and so she does weddings too. And that's something that I did. Again, another thing that I am so delighted to say we had in common. And so at this point, um, she's going to take it away and tell you all how she coveted, as do we all, that um, ASP fellow degree and how it took quite something to, to get to it. And so, Miss Christie, everybody give it up for our girl. Thank you. Um, am I able to share my screen? You should be. All right. And let me get all this stuff off of here. Here we go. So I'm going to share um, this. So I can see some of you in the little windows. Um, I prefer you guys being on camera because I feel like then I have people to talk to. Please feel free to jump in at any time. Um, I prepared a slideshow. We're photographers. We like visuals. Um, so I have visuals for everything that I'm going to talk about. Um, I'm going to stay on track because I have the slideshow, so you're not going to get me off track. The more questions, uh, the better, because then I feel like people are engaging with me. So I decided at the last minute, as Eileen Harding knows, I actually still, I called her from Nashville, and I said, can I change the direction of my program? And it came about after talking to uh, photographers at ASP's Late Night Lounge, um, I went up and approached some photographers that I think should um, apply for this, that are sensational. And the feedback that I received from pretty much everybody is, I'm too afraid. And everybody's afraid of not getting it. 
And, you know, I failed the first attempt and I succeeded on the second, but I decided, you know what, we need to take the fear out of failure. And that's what I want to talk today about. And I'm going to show you my failed attempt. One, hopefully it makes you feel better, but two, to help everybody understand the process. Um, this is not like image competition. It is completely different. And there is a process. And I know some people um, don't pass because their paper doesn't pass. Uh, mine was my paper passed, barely. My portfolio didn't pass because I had some issues in my portfolio. And I'm going to show those to you and explain. But a lot of times it's taking your paper. You're talking about your journey and what led you to doing what you're doing for this portfolio. And a lot of times people don't tie that in as well. So I thought if we talk about that, um, maybe more people will understand um, the process. Now, I could not have done this alone. And yes, I went a little overboard, um, you know, with putting angel wings and hearts here. But these are my fellowship mentors. You know, it's Nancy Bailey Pratt, Jean Marie Poland, and Ella Carlson. I could not have done this without them. And quick little story. Um, this started, I think, about five years ago, maybe even six, Nancy had just received her fellowship. And she said to me, you need to go do this. And I went, no, 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 no. A year later, Jean Marie Poland basically said the same thing. You need to attempt the fellowship. And to Jean, I said, absolutely not. I'm not good enough. And I haven't been doing this long enough to attempt something of that magnitude. And Jean didn't stop talking, but it's what she said next that intrigued me. And she started to talk about how this can be life-changing, this process, and that I would challenge myself to the limits. I'd have to dig deep. And she actually gave me an example of a photo ASP photographer um, who, while writing his paper, um, realized that what he was doing, weddings, really wasn't what he wanted to do anymore. And it took writing this paper and digging deep that he realized that I want to focus on, you know, volume photography. And it was scary for him, you know, to make that transition. He was branded. That's what he was known for, for the weddings. But he made the transition and it changed his life and he's much happier now. And this all intrigued me. And what was the attention getting factor for me was it's the journey that matters, not the destination. And through this whole process, I embrace the journey. And I'm going to stress this a lot. So often, you know, we just are so focused on, we want the trophy, we want the award, but we need to look at the journey and what we get out of this. And then as I, after I started the process, Ella Carlson came on board and encouraged me and pushed me and um, she became one of my two editors of my paper. Jean was an editor and Ella was a paper. And I, I, I stress the importance of reaching out to people to have them help you with your portfolio, have them help you write your paper, um, especially fellows who've gone through the process and understand it. So my goal today is let's take the fear out of failure. I think all of us have a fear of failure. Um, but we're holding ourselves back by not embracing it. I learned so much after my portfolio did not pass the first time. You know, we want to achieve instant success. And because of that, we fear failure, as I did as well. But it's something everybody experiences, and it's really not always a bad thing. It just shows that the way to success is not easy. And ASP has not made this easy. We won't value it if it's easy. So it is, you know, something for us to try to attain. And once you get there, the journey you've gone, man, do you value, um, you know, getting the ASP fellowship because it's not easy and it's not impossible though either. So, you know, failure is a vital experience that we need to help us grow. And I'm going to talk about some of the things that happened to me. Um, that were in our life changing through this process. 
And I love this idea. Failure is the inspiration behind success. And it did get me, um, you know, to try again. And I looked at like the first time I didn't get it, my thought was, okay, the journey continues. I wasn't upset. Um, I'm glad my um, paper and portfolio did not pass the first time. And you're going to see why. I've got some images in there. Looking back, I'm like, I would not have been proud of my portfolio and my paper, neither. So it just forced me to push the throttles forward and really focus. I went and um, did some more photography. I got to hang out with some incredible photographers in the process and bond with them. So the journey was incredible. So I look at like, we need to embrace failure. It's how we learn. There's life lessons that come out of it. And I like this um, you know, this idea of failure is not the opposite of success. It is part of the journey. So I pulled up the, I think some people like, where do I go? What do I do? Um, so on the website, I pulled up, like this shows the personal paper and I read through the guide and it basically suggests that you start with the paper first, which is what I did. I had a rough draft, but it reflects the artist's journey. I'm going to tell you about mine in a second the growth and description of their evolution. And man, did I evolve through this photography journey. And I'm not just talking ASP. From the moment I got into photography, I've had so many phenomenal life lessons come my way. And this was just another part of this incredible journey. So it says your personal paper must be an original work that describes your life work. You'll hear mine's about storytelling. Professional achievements, photographic philosophy, future aspirations, and major influences. You share with the judges who you are, not what you think they want to know. You're transparent. I was very transparent. This is who I am. I talked about how I became a photographer and my vision. And the paper is about the journey and the images are about the destination and skill set after your journey is completed. And there's 25 images um, that you have printed out. And I'm going to show you those. And I actually have one here in case somebody wants to see the physical uh, copy of this. Um, but it, these images, prints represent your area of expertise. And they should also complement your paper. So these are some of the images that I could have put in. Um, you know, many people have a body of work they can pull from. Uh, to create their fellowship portfolios. And a lot of people do pull from all their life's work. I took a different approach, not knowing if it was good or bad, um, but it's something that I wanted to do for me. I had this storytelling epiphany involving photographers. So instead of using you know, past images, I decided to create my portfolio from scratch. And why did I want to do that? because I wanted to embrace the journey and challenge myself and man, where there are some challenges. It took me four years from start to finish and I loved every minute of it. And it, I probably could have done it in three, but we had a pandemic um, and that slowed me down as well. So here's my fellowship portfolio idea. My idea came about because I wanted to tell photographers stories and they're trading places with the camera. They're stepping out from behind the camera and in front of mine. So this was my vision. I put them into costumes to portray a character of themselves, something that resonated with them. It could have been a past career, something with their current career, something with their personalities. My theme that I worked throughout my whole paper is storytelling. And why did I do that? Because I consider myself to be a storyteller. So here are two images from years ago when I worked as a news reporter, but I want to stress that the judges want to get to know you. This is, I think, the, the catalyst um, to achieving, um, you know, the fellowship. They need to get to know you through your paper. So I made my paper very personal by bearing my soul. I put myself out there revealing parts of my life very few people know about starting with my life before photography. I talked about the hardships I experienced as a news reporter and how that led me to photography. 
I created a theme, the storytelling, that was appropriate for my life-changing transition, titling it my paper, Trading Places, when I went from being in front of a camera to being behind one. And that is the same thing as what the photographers did as well. So um, Trading Places was one theme. My other theme, by the way, this is an Ella Carlson painted image. I have to give her credit and I love it. So I had to use it. Um, but, you know, I was a storyteller as a child. I wrote stories. Um, I entered writing competitions. Um, I created character, cartoon characters of people I know um, as an artist. And then as a news reporter, I was a storyteller. Um, so I talked about how I transitioned as well into a visual storyteller um, as a photographer, it's very different telling a story with one frame versus I can talk for one or two minutes as a news reporter. Um, so sorry, I had to throw in, this is my personality, something fun and cutesy. So uh, found that little frog with the camera and thought it was really cool. So then I talked about segueing into my journey as a budding photographer. I talked about the ups and downs that I struggled with, you know, when I was new to this industry. Remember, um, the guide talks about they want to know your evolution. So I talked about my ups and downs and things that I learned that led me to where I am now. I talked about the mentors who helped me along the way and how they changed my life for the better. Now, here we're getting to the failure. The judges feedback on my fellowship personal paper and what happens after you submit and the judges judge, you get a call from uh, the fellowship chairman who right now is Dennis Kraft, and he called me and said, your paper passed, your portfolio didn't. So my paper passed, I think barely on my first attempt, but the judges thought it was too long. And I write like I talk, and those that really know me, I'm a jabbermouth, so I talk and write a lot. I see Lori smiling because she she knows, she knows. Um, and I was told the next time, if you decide to attempt the fellowship again, you need you should cut it down. Um, Dennis told me, he goes, the, the judges thought it was too long. And he said, there's different judges the next time. And he goes, they might not be as tolerant. So I actually cut out about five and a half to six pages. And I went in and really honed it. The second time around was awesome because I was able to start figuring out the process where it was more concise, but that's when I really honed in on some themes, trading places and storytelling. So when I started this project, we're gonna start getting into some of my images now. Nancy Bailey Pratt, one of my mentors and Jean Marie Poland, one of my mentors, forewarned me that some of my images probably wouldn't make it into the portfolio not to be discouraged. And man, am I glad they told me that ahead of time um because wait you're about to see I am so glad they told me look at all the images and this is just some of them that didn't make it into my portfolio this is how I got started I didn't I didn't know where I was going with this I just wanted to create stories of photographers so but if you notice um there's high key mid key sort of low key going on here these images would not probably passed the test for the portfolio because I'm all over the place. And so I had to start figuring things out. Here's some more that didn't make it. Um, so I put in there chef, camera left and food fight and slice and dice. Some of the images that did not make my portfolio, I went on into print competition with. So that's Danica Barrow from Ohio. Um, probably a lot of people know who she is, pet photographer, extraordinaire. And so I entered her as, well, the images food fight and slice and dice, and they both got an imaging excellence um, from those. But I drove to the woman on the right, I drove to West Virginia twice. Um, she loves to can and preserve food. Well, the first time I'm like, you know, I she hi hired a, hairstylist. We wanted her to look like 1950s. And I was trying to create like a 1950s, almost like an ad. So, but I entered it into our local guild. And one of the judges said, my grandmother does canning and that's not how it would look. 
that table would be a mess. Those cans would be, not be stacked up and I don't like her hairdo. So I went back to West Virginia and tried again, but I just kind of realized it's got too much color, you know, too much going on. Michelle Thomas, you see the four images of her. I tried over and over and over um, with her, photographed her in Ohio and in Pennsylvania. She even came to my studio and we tried her on the little horse and just nothing. I could not get anything, I think, to fit, you know, my portfolio. But man, did I learn a lot, you know, doing these images. And when we talk about the journey and life changing, as I was doing this, I had like this epiphany and a speaking program came to me and it's become one of my main speaking programs that I have done all over the country and actually did it for PPA as well for a national live webinar. And I created um, the art of storytelling. So I was learning and growing through this whole process, you know, trying to get ready for doing, you know, my ASP fellowship. Um, I'm, I'm growing, you know, I've, other people are benefiting because now I have a speaking program that I do. So I'm trying to share the benefits. Well, then I start transitioning. So the two at the top also did not make it in my portfolio. I am more of a low key photographer and I had to start thinking as I was writing my paper, I need to present me. And what I was doing before, like you can see, um, well, she was titled Geisha Girl, she's um, Japanese. And um, in the lower image, Susan Feller is actually wearing her mother's kimono. So it makes it you know, more sentimental for her. But she had this other kimono, the high key one, she didn't know where her black kimono was. So I thought if she's got a high key kimono, I got to make it high key. Um, well, as I'm realizing uh, the high key is not going to end up in my portfolio. I'm going all low key. I want to keep my portfolio consistent. I don't want the judges to pick on my portfolio if I'm going high key, low key, all these different colors. So I re-photographed Susan. She... I said, you got to go find your mother's kimono, go find it and let's re-photograph you. So she found it. Pally, who was from Brazil, we created the Brazilian dancer and she's three hours away. She came back to my studio um, just so I could photograph her so I could go low key with her. And I do have to say a big thank you to all the photographers um, who supported me and my project as well. Um, because all the all these people out of the kindness of their hearts gave up a lot of time um, to do this. Now, in on the website, there's also a fellowship guide for the portfolio. And it suggests that you write the paper first, or at least the rough draft, which I did, because as I'm doing it, your whole idea might change. Like that one photographer who went from weddings to wanting to do, you know, volume photography. So I start writing first. And that's when I start figuring out as I'm writing, oh, low key really resonates with me. I'm going to start reshooting. Um, and then now where do you get the guidelines on the ASP website? So just to help you out, I took some screenshots. For those of you who are interested what you're, want, what you're gonna to wanna to do is go to the website and at the very top you see it says ASP Showcase. You click on that, drop down menu comes up and it says awards and degrees. Then this is going to come up. We have to scroll down a little bit. There's more awards at the top. Scroll down to where it says ASP Fellowship. You click on that. And I see a lot of you really looking intently at my screen. If you need me to go back, just let me know. Then once you click on the ASP fellowship, you're going to see different downloads. So it says to download the current fellowship guide, click here. I did that. I read it thoroughly numerous times. So I got an idea of where, what I'm supposed to talk about in my paper. I also wanted to download. So that was the paper. Yeah, well, then you can go in to download the current fellowship guide. There's specific stuff. Here's the fellowship papers. So there's some that talk about the paper. And then the one below that is talking about um, the fellowship paper and then the layouts. I studied the layouts. Doug Bennett, 
and Kimberly Smith, I'm going to show you hers next, are the two most recent, not including, you know, me, this was last year. So Doug and Kimberly both were um, received the fellowship, but I would get on and look at everybody's portfolios. Do you see how everything is balanced out? Um, you know, he's got the, and I did this too. I have, I only had three verticals. He's got four and mine were kind of in the middle center and you want everything. This is a big thing. This is where I think a lot of people struggle. And I want to say, I think people are afraid of the fellowship because they think if they don't get it the first time, it's a reflection on how they are as a photographer. We have phenomenal photographers in our organization. It's not based on how good you are. Um, it's how you present all of your work. And this is where I think it confuses a lot of people that, you know, Nancy Bailey, I remember telling me when I was starting my layout, she goes, I don't think you're gonna be able to pull this off. And at one point I didn't think I was either. My images are all over the place in terms of crop sizes. Some people have like 16 by 20s. You know, it's a, I think it's a little bit easier to put it together. Mine were all over the place, but I made it happen. Um, and the really cool thing is Dennis Kraft, the chairman, said I could send him my portfolio layout. And I'm going to show it. it. It looked just like this. Um, I emailed it to him. He signed off on it. If there was something wrong with it, he's, he would have told me. Um, so there are people within the ranks of ASP that are want you to succeed and will help you. So you can, can you, I say something? Can you back yes. up one slide? Yep. yep. Go ahead. Um, I just wanted to say, when you look at the layout, that's exactly how it's presented to the judges. You're giving the judges and Dennis the exact way that you want these placed. And it has to function as if it were a competition image in the way that nothing should be distracting. Everything should work together style-wise, et cetera. And Ella served as, was it last year, Ella? She was the chairman right. of the fellowship last year. So uh, in 2021. Yeah. So she was the chairman of this. Um, so yeah, you want everything to balance out. And so here's, look at how different they all are. People, photographers are creating their portfolios based on their personalities, based on what resonates with them. And um, I mean, just look how different they are. And I've had some people, one person recently said, well, I do birds. I can't enter those. Yes, you can. You could do birds and landscape. He's like, well, I got landscape too. By the way, he's on this Zoom. So he knows who I'm talking about, but I'm not naming names. Um, you can have a row of landscape at the bottom and birds at the top if they fit and flow together. And I'm not sure if it was you. It was one of my mentors said to me, Basically, what you want to do is when you get this together, this is how the judges are going to see it hanging on the wall. They judge this all on a wall. They're all put up on a wall. And it was explained to me, and this was helped me so much. It's almost like when you look at them on the wall or on this layout, they almost seem like they're one image together. Exactly. Yeah. So I have another one here, two more. From um, I'm trying to show the variety. This is Sherry Hammond and Dennis Hammond. Um, and you can see and look at the different mats that are chosen, the backgrounds, um, you know, that are chosen for this. And if you notice, Dennis has got different colors. Red is an attention getter. He puts those smack down in the middle. Your eyes go to the middle and then start moving out. This is the whole process, thought process that goes behind all this. Here is mine. This is the one that did not pass. And I'm going to show you why. Um, but I did take from looking at other people's layouts that I sort of wanted to start with a shorter row at the top, a little bit bigger in the middle, and the bottom just kind of being my foundation. So it was heavier on the bottom. So here's the feedback that I received from Dennis Kraft. And he's relaying what the judges said that so I entered my portfolio during the pandemic and I'm just going to share I'm going to put myself out there and share my journey so you guys understand why I did this during the pandemic I was not going to apply that year it was not even on my radar 
Um, but I get what I call promptings from the universe and or God. And I've been getting them for about 30 years now. And I have learned to listen. And sometimes they're really profound where I just shake because I know it's a guardian angel. It's God, the universe saying, you need to do this. Go in this direction, go right, don't go left. So I've learned to listen. Well, we're in the pandemic. Everybody's in lockdown and I'm sound asleep. And a voice clear as day came to me and said, do the fellowship now. And I sat up and went, okay, God, I hear you. And I hit the ground running because I had maybe two months to get my paper done and all of this put together. Um, and I knew I wasn't ready. And I knew I probably wouldn't pass. And I didn't care. I just needed to listen to this prompting because I have learned that um, this for me was maybe not about getting the fellowship, but it was, I needed to go down this road because it might open doors for me. And it did, it became a stepping stone for me. And because of this journey and doing this with Ella, Ella, I hope you're okay with me telling the story. Sure. She's saying yes. Um, that Ella was one of my editors. And at one point she called me up and she goes, I'd worked on a committee with her. She goes, you know, I already liked you, but I like you even better after reading your paper because you're so vulnerable and open. I bared my soul. And it led to me getting on the ASP board, which was not on my radar. But um, Ella called me up and said, we'd like to bring you on the board. And I said, absolutely, because I love to connect with people and I love to give back to the industry. And I feel this was part of my journey and where I was supposed to go with this. So with that said, I didn't have enough usable images, low key images. Remember, I had all those other ones but I didn't have enough and I'm in a pandemic, my studio shut down. So I have two images of Warren Motts. He's number five is the legend. Down at the bottom, he's number 18 as the military museum director. I had two different characters, two different you know settings that he's in. And then I have two of Lori McCoy who is on here right now is the number one concert pianist. And number eight is the music teacher. And I was told the judges don't want to see the same person more than once. So with that, it's like, okay. So Lori on the left got eliminated. Lori on the right stayed. And Jean Marie Poland said to me, Christy, you need to get the wide shot of Lori out of your portfolio because it's different from all the other images. You are in tighter on all the other photographers. So remember, we talked about everything matching. So I listened to her advice and took that one out. By the way, I did enter that in competition since she was, um, you know, being that part of her image was being booted from my portfolio and she did get an imaging excellence. So I'm getting some other images for print comp, you know, based on the ones that I'm taking out. Warren on the left um, ended up on the cutting room floor. Um, I love the one of him as the legend um, camera right. So other issues, the judges said some of my images were muddy. And I can tell you number 22, Pommy Mommy and Judy is on here right now. Um, Pommy Mommy, I already had an image that I was dealing with mixed keys. She's got high key dogs and low key dogs. And I knew this was gonna be a challenge. So I went in and tried to darken the high key dogs. And I guess I went overboard and they got muddy. Um, the boudoir photographer, I toned him down because we're dealing with a lot of skin and, you know, the skin is going to be brighter than the clothes. So I toned him down and he went muddy. The same thing with the artist. So these hurt my chances of the fellowship the first time. I'm going to show you the difference between muddy and non-muddy. Remember, we talk about growth through failure. One of my lessons that I learned, a positive that came out from all this, is I learned how to use levels on Photoshop. I didn't know how to use levels before that. And it made John pop. So now I do levels with every single image that I do. Um, it was something I learned. Here's Judy that I had, you know, tried to tone down. I went in and tried levels and look at her pop. Look at the difference. So this is all learning for me. 
This is Miles Andonov, who is also an ASP member. And he, oh, we had so many characters. He's a drummer. You know, we could have made him a, a drumming musician. Um, he is an artist. He um, has a, a carry concealed weapon. Um, you know, used to shoot guns. He doesn't right now um, because of kids in the house. But anyway, we created the artist. He loved that image, but he's muddy. And I asked him to come back to my studio and I actually photographed him for print competition. And then I'm like, oh, I like this one better. So I said, Miles, I'm sorry. I'm ditching out of the artist. Uh, I'm entering you as gunslinger. And I entered him in competition too. Um, but he was like, yeah, all right. You know, I really like the artist better. And I said, well, at this point, I got to do what I need to do, you know, for my um, portfolio. So he wrapped his brain around it. He's fine with it now. Um, and I just want to say too, I think some people think that your portfolio has to be all imaging excellence or lone images. Absolutely not. I entered some of the images that are in my portfolio. Some of them have never, ever gone into image competition. And I had one that I put in my state. And by the way, it got a 77, but it made a different impact mixed in the storytelling theme with my portfolio. So these are the images, you know, that I ditched out of. These are the ones that I added. And what's great is Ella Carlson, who became nationally known um, for creating aliens and won the Grand Imaging Award, I believe for a whole album, right, of aliens, Ella. So we were talking and she said to me, I'd love to be in your portfolio. And I'm like, can you come to my studio or I'll come to yours? And she said, absolutely. So we worked together and came up with a costume and I actually hired a professional movie makeup artist, but she came all the way to my studio and I photographed her. Gabriel Alonzo, he has the fellowship. I flew to Texas to photograph him for this. He wanted to be in the portfolio. They understand what this is all about and to be in it, heck yeah. Um, so my journey continued. I got to spend time with Ella and Gabriel and we photographed some photographers and just had this incredible journey. So here's my second attempt. This is the one that passed. This is what I'm trying to show you. There's my layout, okay? Mm -hmm. When you do this, you have to print out this and it goes in your case to send to the chairman. So I just wanted to tell you that. All that for that little thing, right? <laughs> Now I'm going to hit my share screen again. Let's see if this works. And I hope I did not lose my program because now I don't see it. All right. Give me a second. My program's disappeared. Are we having fun yet? Yes. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yep. Oh, wait. Hang on. You guys are going to see all my folders. Maybe not. Uh, now my program disappeared through all this. So I'm going to my program. Whoops. Go ahead and answer it while I'm doing this. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> guys, I like to have fun. So this is all good. Let me I'm mute just, myself before. I feel bad in. that you guys are having to sit and wait on this. Um, but technology, we always have little glitches, right? All right, here we go. No, it's fantastic seeing the subtle differences that make such a huge difference overall. Okay, I think we're back. So I just, I wanted to show you, um, you know, that... You're going to send this in digitally, but you also have to print it out. And I actually printed twice and sent this. So, because Dennis Kraft said you can do one, but two, the judges sometimes look at this. And what it's doing is telling them number one, Party Girl is the first. Uh, this is a guide for the, the crew that's putting the images up on the wall. So, you put one, two, three, four, five, so they know exactly what order to put it in as well, but the judges can also take a look at it. So what I wanna do is show you some images. If you guys have any questions, please jump in. I'm gonna show you my portfolio now. And if you have questions, I'm just gonna show it to you unless you wanna hear, you know, we have um, Jean Poland, one of my mentors. I photographed her in a, photo a different photographer studio. It, she's from Iowa. So I have photographed photographers all over the United States using other people's studios as well. Joe Seca on the right um, has a love for cars. 
He worked for 40 years at General Motors and he now photographs car races for national magazines. And we actually went to a commercial car garage in West Virginia for me to create this crazy car fanatic. And a lot of the costumes I purchased, so I bought the straight jacket. Um, the man on the left, the samurai, um, he is part Japanese and this is his whole <laughs> ensemble. Um, the man on the right is a landscape photographer, mountain man. And those are his antique snowshoes. So <clears throat> that he has hanging over his mantle of his fireplace. And he actually, this was uh, behind him, his cabin in Canada. Um, so he has a cabin in Canada. So you can see I've kind of gone all over the place, but we brought in some sentimental stuff like his, you know, his shoes, his snowshoes um, that he can Thanks. use. Chris, yes. do you have a question? Um, Michael Pucciarelli wants to know if the letters in your titles have to be capitalized the first Letters. You can do it any way you want. I picked this font because it's called the American Typewriter. And to me, that's about typewriters, journalism. I was to the as journalists use typewriters. So you can have them capitalized. You can have the whole word capitalized. You don't have to have it capitalized. You can use whatever font that you want. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. It's your have vision question, and how Christy. you want to present it to the world. Yes, ma'am. So you submit the little thumbnails like the big print, but do you also submit bigger prints as if you do in print competition or how do they actually look? I was letters? ready for this. Here's my print. <laughs> okay. So I think I picked the one eighth mounting and here on the back, they also have the guide will tell you I taped on the back, but I used the packing tape to make sure it's stuck. They also want you to put the, like what number it appears in your portfolio, Samurai, but they have you put your contact information so they can mail it back to you. You don't want it mailed back to you, by the way. If you don't get it, they mail it back to you. If you get it, they take it to imaging. So my first batch was mailed back to me. But yes, you have to print out all 25. And you don't want to go through a run of the mill um, printer, Nancy Bailey. Are you here and can jump in? Because I want you to hear Nancy's story if she jumps, if she can get on. Nancy, by the way, this is perfect because this is the image of Nancy Bailey as the world traveler on the right. Nancy was having problems getting on earlier. The, she got I, in. She, uh, Nancy, can you unmute? Nancy has the fellowship. And she's one of the you know people that talked me into this. We created the world traveler. Um, she's from Indiana. She came to my studio. And I wanted to create the world travel of her because she got her fellowship um, from traveling all over the world and photographing people of different cultures. But I was hoping Nancy could talk about the print paper quality. You know, she was oh. in, I don't see her right I'm now. I'm here, I'm here. Tell Nancy, me you can you share with everybody what you told me about your first and second attempt? Um, and, it, you know, it deals with, you got to be careful who you go with to do this. You, are you ready? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, on my first attempt, I was going the cheap way and I had all my prints and I had them printed at the regular color lab on color paper, just like I always do. And I was told by one of the judges, they called me and said that your, your uh, subject matter would have scored, but your print quality was just not there. And you need to have them printed on black and white paper if you're going black and white. So I reprinted the whole thing. And Jonathan Penny actually reprinted mine for me on black and white. And he was very good about every detail and um, checking and sending you prints and making sure they were OK. He sent you previews and a five by seven size. And he helped uh, anything that was missing on it. He suggested help with it. So it was well worth it. It cost a lot more, but it saved me a lot in the long run because I only had to print them over again the second time. So uh, it's well worth it to go with the right printer or make sure that the quality matches all the way through. So mine were also all black and white. Yeah. And because of what Nancy told me, I also use Jonathan Penny. Now, Ella, if you want to jump in, Ella went through a different printer I and did. her prints were printed differently. You don't always have to be like everybody else. Exactly. I think I have the only portfolio that was printed on metal. 
And I went through Blazing Editions, which is a very high-end lab in Rhode Island near me. And um, Dennis complained about the weight. They weighed approximately 120 pounds altogether, but I put them in a big rolling case, so it wasn't too bad to transport them. Um, but yeah, I, I, he said he tested them out because they have to all be displayed. And so he wanted to make sure that the Velcro that they were going to be put to the background at imaging would hold them. So he tested a couple of prints for a few months to make sure they'd all stay stuck up there. So, but you can print them on anything basically that you can transport to wherever it's being judged. Michigan will be the year, will be this year, probably for a couple of years. Um, and, you know, you just want the highest quality you can. Yeah, Sharon has a question. She wants to know, since you've entered twice, do you have to rewrite your paper also? No. Nope. No, um, we've actually had um, a person that was not accepted the first year and he reapplied the second year and didn't change a thing and got accepted the second year. It has to be a different jury the second year. You cannot have the same people on the jury two years in a row. So he had a completely different jury and a completely different result. And he was advised to do that by Dennis Kraft, who was the fellowship chair, who didn't really think that the jury had it right. And apparently he was correct. So can I say something here too? Sure. Yep. I would like to stress that you don't, though you don't have to do the paper twice, both Christy and I did. My mistake was the same as Christy's the first time. Christy talked too, talked too much, put too much information in her paper. On mine, I didn't want the world to know who I was. I just wanted to try to tie my prints to it. Well, that's what was my message is let the world know who, or at least the judges know who you really are and why you felt that way. And it benefited both of us greatly to rewrite our paper and not be afraid to share some very personal things that you might not want everybody to know about yourself. So be prepared for that. Yeah, Christy, what was your first uh, word count on your paper? And then the second- I don't remember the word count, but you're probably looking, looking close to 12 pages, 11. And are I cut saying, mine down uh, to six pages. So are you t speaking a standard 250 words per page, basically? I don't know. I just had, you know, I had a little counter at the bottom and I just wrote and um, I know- I ended up with 3,500 words on my last paper. And when I talked to Ella, she was one of my editors. You, you need, Ella, it's 2,000 words or more. You got to start with a minimum exactly. of 2,000. I think you were, you were around 8,000 words from your first version, if I remember correctly. Okay. I don't and, remember that part. but And you okay, cut it like in half thousand. almost. Yeah, about half. Um. So, yeah. But when... Dennis Kraft said it's too long. I already knew exactly what I was going to cut. There are big chunks that I could cut out, but I actually, I rewrote it so many times um, that I had three different titles. You know, I started with one title and I'm like, yeah, it's kind of lame. Um, I came up with another title for the first paper. And by the time, like a whole year had year, two years had elapsed, year and a half. I had the epiphany and I'm like, it's trading places. I mean, so I rewrote my paper too to get that theme. I think I mentioned it at least three times in my paper. I worked the theme throughout my paper. And I, I will say this, this was such a beautiful gift. Um, one of the, just, you know, the when the judges are brought in to do this, they're brought in anonymously. We don't know when the judging is going to happen. We don't know who the judges are. We're never told that. It's up to the judge to approach the recipient if they want. So when I was at imaging, a judge came up to me and I, I loved it. I mean, she was like, you know, I, your portfolio is great, but she goes, your paper had me from the first sentence. And I bared my soul from the first sentence. It is an attention getter. And she said, I sat and cried when I read your paper. And she said, I knew zero about you. And she said, now I know so much about you. 
and it made my portfolio even more personal to her. That's why the judges need to get to know you. Um, she understood my journey, my evolution, the things that I've gone through to get to where I am now. And my paper starts off, and I'm just going to put it out there. My paper is very dark, and it, but it, ha it ends on a happy note. Um, my life as a journalist, and I'm not going to go into a lot because the paper is going to be published in the ASP magazine. So I'm not going to, you know, give away too much, but part of me was like, do I really put this out there for the world to see? And, you know, cause I think we're all afraid of that failure, you know, fear of rejection. How are people going to take what I'm writing about? And then this was kind of life-changing for me too. It was an incredible journey where I started realizing it doesn't matter what anybody thinks. This is my journey. And like probably all of us, we all have pain in our lives. We cannot escape it. And I'm writing about the pain that I have experienced. So it starts off dark. But as I segue into photography, my life became so happy. And I met all of you guys and I have like the most incredible friendships and I've had the best journey on the planet. So I end with on a happy note, you know, so the whole thing's not doom and gloom, but I also thought there might be other people going through what I went through and maybe this will help them know that they're not alone by, you know, reading about it, that another person went through what I've got, what I'm going through and it's okay. And maybe people will start talking about it. And I, I'm sorry, I'm being vague. I just, you know, this is going to be published and um, I don't want to take away from, you know, the purpose of the magazine and everything. Um, but if you guys have any more questions, otherwise I'll keep going. Uh, I one, one moment. Um, a, which uh, volume of the ASP magazine is this going to be in? Because I thought it was already published. No, it's going to be in the winter issue. So in the be winter issue. Great. Yep. Thank you, because uh, several people want to uh, access that. Uh, and it will also be on the website. Uh, on the ASP website. That's yeah. great. Um, we have one other question, which was, um, a, a, do the judges read the paper first and then see the portfolio yes. or vice versa? They read first. Okay. They read first. They judge the paper separately and then they go in and see the portfolio and then right. they judge that. Okay. And Ellie, you can correct me if I'm wrong. What was explained to me, um, Dennis Kraft told me that they get the paper three weeks before they see the, the portfolio. Right. Um, so they have time to read it. Maybe they want to reread it. Um, you want to make sure you have the fewest number of grammatical problems in there. That's why you probably want an editor. Um, you know, Ella and Jean were, I wrote as a television news reporter. So we had to unlearn all the grammar we had learned <laughs> in school. I had to unlearn everything. We put commas in where we have to take a breath as we're reading our scripts. So I had all these commas in there. I did television for 25 years. This is what I know. And Ellen and Jean were in there taking commas out every, you know, which way <laughs> you want people to read, you know, your papers. If you know somebody, you know, Jean um, taught literature, English, you know, for many, many, many years. So there's people you can reach out to. And I'm more than happy as a journalist. Um, and I've gotten better through this process too. Now I know where not to put um, commas to breathe um, yeah. in there. It's got me to kind of hone my writing skills, you know, for the paper. Um, I'm sure Ella will be happy to help Nancy. Yep. I mean, there's other fellows. You just call them and they're going to help you. You know, I just reached out to people and said, help. Ella was one of them. I just called her up and said, I need help. And Is there a stylistic um, a pattern that you must follow? Are you Chicago style, AP style or what? Not for this. For the EA paper, yes. But for this, it's more of a personal paper. So they're not looking for all that much formality in it. That, as Christy said, they want to get to know you and they want to see how your personal journey led to the work that you're presenting to them. And Ella, isn't it if the paper doesn't pass, you're done? Yeah, exactly. Well, they will still look at your portfolio to give you feedback, but you have to pass both the paper and then the portfolio review. Yeah. I have a question. Yes. Um, so I noticed that 
the older image layouts were all on that medium gray background. Has that changed that now you can customize your background for your layout to match the style of your images? Yeah, absolutely. You can use whatever color you want. You also do not have to have matting if you don't want. None of my images were matted. They all went right to the border. The maximum size is 20 by 20, but it can be as small as uh, 14 by 11, I believe. It's all in the, the guide. But yeah, as long as it looks like a cohesive unit, it's stylistically consistent and it works together as a, as a complete unit, then you're good to go. So, so when these are placed on the presentation um, wall. wall, is there a specific color that that always is? No, the wall is just a wood wall with the grooves that you can, you know, you put the, the images into the grooves and set them up and it's three rows, just like you have to put it in three rows. That's about the only restriction. Um, but it's like a it's just, yeah, it's just a wood wall. So okay. they don't change the color of the wall. And taking off of that question, when I, if you can see this, um, I know like Nancy chose the museum white, if I'm saying that right, Nancy, for right. her mat, I chose to go to darker gray, um, because I didn't want, like, if I put white, it might make my darks look too dark. And if I went black, it might make my light, you know, my whites look too bright. So, and I, with Jonathan Penny, what I love about him too, is he helped me come up with um, the gray tone that we picked. Um, so we didn't bring out too much in the images and the, they just kind of uh, worked cohesively. Um, but some people do, you know, white mats, um, like Ella said, no mats. Um, it's just how you want to present your images. Yeah, mine were in black. As I had very black backgrounds on many of the images, and that was so. It it, it were whatever works best with your imagery is what you should choose. So at this point, I'm just kind of going through the images real quick. We don't need to, you know, talk about these too much, unless you have a question. There just is showing. a clarification about. Um, I was pretty sure that you were already published, and one of our members did note that yes you are in the winter edition of the magazine and that is available and I am hoping that that's online as well at this time you're you're muted Ella yeah Kimberly Smith's portfolio and paper is in the current winter edition Christie's will be in a year from now basically a year from January 1st this past January 1st So now we're wrapping it up. Woo! We are indeed. Any I'm coming questions? back to talk about let's conquer our fears. I've talked to so many people who are holding themselves back because they're too afraid to do this. Um, and I just wanted to put in here, here's some famous failures. I mean, everybody fails. Um, that's how we learn. You know, we've got Henry Ford, Thomas Edison, J.K. Rowling, who, by the way, was on welfare. And she now has more money than the Queen of England. And she failed like 12 times trying to get her book to a publisher. Um, you know, Walt Disney failed. Abraham Lincoln failed. Uh, but look at where they ended up. They didn't let their fear of failure stop them. And same with me. I could have, you know, I said, absolutely not. I'm not good enough to do this. But I decided to focus not on the destination, but the journey. And when we fail, it's growth. You know, we're learning that's what this is all about, is learning. Just like all of us enter print competition. Look at all the thousands of people that are too afraid to enter print competition because they're afraid of failure. But those of us who are not, and that's why we're members of ASP, um, you know, have gone after our degrees. And I know all of you know what you've learned from this, the education. And to me, that's what this fellowship is all about and the education associate degree. And I love this Abraham Lincoln quote. My great concern is not whether you have failed, but whether you are content with your failure. Mine is absolutely yes. And it takes a village to raise a photographer. Again, reach out to um, people who've gone through this journey. Um, there's so many um, fellows that would love to help you. 
ASP wants all of you to succeed. They want all of you to get this. And by the way, the first year that I applied, zero people got it. Nobody got it. Last year, two people got it. This year, one. It was told to me, there's no limit. If there's 10 people deserving of the fellowship in, in a given year, all 10 people will get it. There is no limit. That's so, correct. And then it's not how it ends that matters, but the journey that it takes to get there. And I just want to say the ASP fellowship has been, the fellowship has been in existence since 1970. Since then, 130 photographers have received it. You can too. Believe in you. Well, that's really super. I uh, thank you, Miss Christie. Uh, you are a mine of information for everybody, um, and we're delighted to have had you. I am going to stop the recording.